the wave nature of matter. We will examine the wave nature of matter in two parts. First, we will look at de Broglie's proposal. Then, we will look at the evidence that developed to support the idea. Louis de Broglie's thesis. In the early 1900s, Max Planck and Albert Einstein had established the dual nature of light as both a wave and a particle. In 1924, a young physicist named Louis de Broglie proposed in his doctoral dissertation that light was not the only thing in the universe that had this dual nature. De Broglie proposed that particles also had this dual nature, which we call the wave-particle duality. He proposed that ordinary particles, such as electrons, protons, atoms, or bowling balls, could also exhibit wave characteristics in certain circumstances. De Broglie developed his idea based on a combination of relativity and the photoelectric effect. This combination of ideas led to a mathematical relationship between the wavelength of a particle and the momentum of the particle. Momentum is an important concept in physics and is the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity. The formula was lambda equals h divided by mv, where lambda is the wavelength, h is Planck's constant, the value of which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. M is the mass of the particle, and V is the speed of the particle. I hope the mathematics is clear that the heavier the particle is, the shorter its wavelength, and the faster it is moving, the shorter the wavelength. Let's do an example to see how large the wavelength is of an ordinary object. Suppose we have a one kilogram mass moving at a speed of 10 meters per second. The wavelength will be lambda equals 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds divided by one kilogram times 10 meters per second which equals 6.626 times 10 to the minus 35th meters. This wavelength is so small that it is clearly ignorable when we talk about large objects. Now let's think about an electron, whose mass is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31st kilograms, moving at a speed of 100 meters per second. Lambda equals 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds divided by 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms times 100 meters per second, which is 7.3 times 10 to the minus 6th meters. This is larger than an atom, so this wavelength is clearly significant when we are talking about electrons in atoms. So the wave nature of matter becomes important when we are dealing with very small objects like electrons and atoms. The evidence that supported de Broglie's idea came in the form of interference patterns in electron beams. Interference is a wave phenomenon. Particles do not show interference patterns. In 1927, at Bell Telephone Laboratory, Davison and Germer observed interference patterns when a beam of electrons was aimed at a crystal of nickel metal. This was a setup similar to ones that had been used to observe interference when X-rays were aimed at the same crystal. The electron beam was aimed at the crystal, and a detector, which could be moved around the crystal, detected the reflected electrons. The angle was measured to get the specific reflection. 
Davison and Germer found an interference pattern very similar to the one found from X-ray diffraction, shown here on the left. The electron diffraction pattern, shown on the right, has many similarities, although it is not exactly the same. More evidence was developed that same year by G.P. Thompson, son of J.J. Thompson, when he sent an electron beam through a thin foil. The pattern of circles he found was similar to, but not exactly the same as, the pattern found for X-ray diffraction of a powdered sample of a substance. The existence of diffraction from electron beams confirms that the electrons are waves as well as particles. So, wave-particle duality applies to both light and particles, but particularly to small particles like electrons. There's one more important idea that developed prior to the development of the current model of the atom, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle is a consequence of measurement. Whenever we measure something, the act of measurement interacts with the thing we are measuring and changes it in ways that we cannot predict. Heisenberg showed that the more precisely we measure the momentum of a particle, the less precise the measurement of the position of the particle would be, and vice versa. There was a limit to how well we could know both the position and momentum of any particle. This is described by the equation delta x, the uncertainty in the position of the particle, times delta mv, the uncertainty in the momentum of the particle, is greater than or equal to h, which is Planck's constant, divided by 4 pi. Again, since Planck's constant is so small, this can be ignored for larger objects. However, for electrons in atoms, the uncertainty in the position of the electron in the atom is often larger than the atom itself. It is important to realize that the uncertainties in the measurement of the position of an object and the momentum of the object are inversely related. As we decrease the uncertainty in one, the uncertainty in the value of the other must go up. So, while in theory only, we could know the position of an object exactly, if we did, we could know nothing at all about its momentum, and vice versa. The better we know the momentum, the less we can say about the position of the object. The better we know the position, the less we can say about the momentum. What this means is that we can no longer think about the atom as a small version of large things that we can see. We are dealing with a wave, and our ability to locate it and describe the path that it travels is very limited. We need a new way of thinking about and describing electrons in atoms.